If you're looking for the most ridiculously overpowered build in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you want to have your health restore instantly, you never want to have to use rations, and you want to completely decimate everything on the battlefield. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that that's actually a possibility in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to achieve this. Today we will be going over all of the equipment, weapons, skills, and abilities you're going to need to perfect this build. And then I'll also be going over all of the locations to acquire all of these weapons and armor as well. Now I do want to say that while the skills and abilities are definitely necessary for this build, the armor and weapons that you use can be swapped out depending on your own personal playstyle, or if you feel like adjusting the build as you play through the game just to use something different. Now, the first thing we're going to go over is the main form of this build. It is the highest damage version of this, uh, but there is a couple other forms that are about on par and maybe even a little bit more fun and versatile. And we're going to be using the dual spears for this. So the main spear that we're using is Fafnir's Fang, which increases critical chance when surrounded by th uh, more than three enemies. And we've also got the feared spear. Now you can use really whatever offhand spear you want, but this will increase your speed when dodging, which just really meshes well with the rest of this build. Now, the Mentors set, we are using the entire set for this one. You do not have to use that, but the entire set is pretty good. The bonuses on here increase attack after critical hits, and then additional increase to speed, which is nice. Now, what you can do if you want to is instead of using the full Mentor set, you can do what I like to do, and that is to actually swap out for a piece, like two-piece Thane set, or... Better yet, instead of using Thanes, if you can acquire the Draugr two pieces from the Draugr set, uh, either if that's through Retta or through the shop, then that will be incredibly OP because the two piece bonus on the Draugr set increases your attack when hitting a poisoned enemy. And this build is focused around poison. So the Draugr set is particularly useful in this build. Now, a very important piece of this build is the Viper Bow. This increases your critical chance after each hit, stacks up to 10 times for the duration of 2 seconds, but in the midst of battle you can get up to a plus 30 critical chance, which is huge when you're doing a critical chance build. Now it's also incredibly easy to get. You can get this from any shop, to include the shop that you create when upgrading your settlement, but any shop will do, all you gotta do is just talk to the person here. It's gonna be available under the weapons section, or the gear section. Since I've already picked it up, it's obviously not showing up here, um, but definitely highly recommend it. It's going to be great to have in general, because not only does it increase your critical chance from ranged attacks, that counts for all of your weapons as well. Now, this build is clearly focused around critical hits and then poison. The reason we're focusing on poison, you could also use fire if you wanted to, um, but poison is going to be applied to your enemies. Then you have a skill called grit. Now, when you attack an enemy, you're going to apply the poison there. And if they manage to hit you, especially if you have a ton of enemies that are already poisoned, if anybody hits you, that poison is going to tick. It's going to deal damage to them and then instantly recover any of the health or basically the last hit, the red portion of your bar that is lost will be instantly recovered. This can be incredibly overpowered, especially when fighting harder targets that can hit you for basically your entire health bar. You can instantly regenerate that entire health bar without even having to do anything. A poison or fire, you're going to need these abilities, poison strike or fire strike. Both of these apply either effect to your right hand weapon and can be acquired for turning in medallions at the Assassin's Bureau after killing the Order of the Ancients, or Zealots in the World. Now this is where things can get really interesting. We're going to get into the skills that really make this build OP here in a second, but I did want to touch on the Mournful Cry Mythical Hammer. This is one of the premium currency hammers, but there is a chance that Retta will have this in the shop, and if you want to run a poison build, having this in your offhand is incredibly overpowered because this makes both weapons, when critical hits land, they temporarily poison your weapon. Which means you're running a critical hit build, and you're going to be poisoning your weapons, and the spear is going to deal a lot of damage, it's going to get a lot of crits, and it's going to be poisoning enemies, and then your offhand is going to shield break, and then apply poison and deal a lot of damage in and of itself. So I really do love the spear and hammer combination, especially when we're running poison, the Mournful Cry is incredibly overpowered for this. 
and I highly recommend picking it up if you ever see it in Reda's shop. Now the skills. There's a lot of skills to go over, but I'm going to go over the basics here. Obviously, you're going to want to pick up any of the adrenaline upgrades you can find, uh, but another main one that you want to get is Miasma. So enemies who die from your poison attacks will release a toxic cloud around them, infecting those who enter. This is going to be great. You're going to want the fire version of this if you decide to go the fire route instead of the poison route, or better yet, get both, and you can just do both. Uh, now, another really useful skill is obviously going to be the heavy dual wield, which is in the bear tree. And then even better than that is going to be, well, you're going to definitely want Berserker's Metal because you're going to want to make sure that you keep your adrenaline as you acquire it and getting hit. You don't want that to go away. Definitely recommend Berserker's Metal. And then up here is Adrenaline Fiend. When one or more adrenaline slots are filled, you gain a damage boost and attack speed boost. This effect augments with each slot filled. So it just gets better and better. Now, I do want to give you a nice little tip of Ruski here for the adrenaline as well. If you always want to go into combat with a full, like, basically all of your adrenaline bars full, just assassinate the dummies outside of the Assassin's Bureau here, and you'll fill up your adrenaline bars. So just each one is going to fill up one of your adrenaline bars. So just take them out, and then you can always have full adrenaline bars when you leave your camp. Now, there's a couple other really important skills that we need to discuss in here. First and foremost is obviously grit within the wolf tree. This is going to be what allows you to basically have infinite health from all your poison procs. Uh, another good skill to pick up is last chance healing. If you do happen to have somebody at one shot you, your health will go all the way down. But then if your poison is applied, you could instantly regenerate your entire health bar. Pretty amazing. Definitely need that skill. Uh, and then you're going to probably want to pick up here is Brush with Death. So when you're dodging, you slow down time. Now, within each of these trees, there's going to be separate skills you want to pick up. Obviously, if you're using the full Mentor set, you want to pick up all of the Way of the Raven gear bonuses. And then depending on what weapons you end up choosing, you're going to want to pick up either all of the Spear ones if you're using dual Spears, or pick up Spears and Hammer, or Daggers if you decide to go that way. But obviously having those spear upgrades are going to be very, very good to have. You can really tailor this to your own personal play style, uh, but there's definitely a lot of fun ways. And using a fire version of this could be really fun as well, so definitely keep that in mind. But we do need to get into all of the equipment locations, so that way you can acquire all this wonderful stuff, which we're going to go over right now. First up, we're going to need to go to Guildsford. Uh, there's going to be a church here, and if you go to right here on the road, you're going to see this lift. Now, for those of you that don't know, these lifts can actually be activated to, guess what? Lift you up! There we go. Once you're up here on the lift, just go ahead and shoot this bad boy down. That's going to open up a way into the church. We can then hop, skippity jump up in here. You're going to need to drop down this here ladder. And you can already see where we need to go next. It's this area right here. Just got to break those boxes. Break this bad boy. Drops us down into here. Open this door. And then, of course, there's going to be more boxes in the way. Also, if you're wondering what sword we're using, this is Excalibur. I do have a video tutorial how to acquire Excalibur if you would like to get it. Definitely one of the best two-handed weapons you can get in the game. It's quite a long process to get it, but man, is it worthwhile. You can check out that video in the description below. But right back here, we have got our first of this wonderful mentor set. And we are going to fully upgrade this as well because it looks really great when it's fully upgraded. Next up, we've got to go east, all the way over here to the Andertham hideout? Andertham hideout? I don't know. Anyways, there's going to be a drop down right here. This is relatively easy to get to. You're going to have to drop all the way down. There's going to be a dude that you can assassinate down here. And there it is. Oh, bye bye now. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, there's a couple things that we're going to need to do. First and foremost, at the end of this, we got to break that. And pick up this bad boy right here. Look at the stupid rats. 
Slide through this bad boy. And there's going to be a wall that we need to chuck this at, Rottler. Oh, of course we're on fire. Oh, it's so frustrating when that happens. At least it's lighting the way, right? <laughs> Definitely one way to do it. Over here. Are we still on fire? Oh my god. And then right on the other side of this, our next piece of armor. The Mentors of Embrace. Now we've got to go to good old Snottinghamshire. Yeah, it's actually in the Sherwood Forest at the Sherwood Hideout. This one's pretty quick to get to, although the people in this area are high level, so I highly recommend maybe just running in, looting, and then running away. Because why not? It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. There's also a ton of really evil wolves around. Uh, so be careful of the wolves, because they do not mess around. The next piece is also in Snottinghamshire. It's in this camp that is north along the river. Now this one you will have to fight people, or at least one person, to get the item. I went ahead and cleared out the camp because this particular NPC will try and run away and just basically ruin everything. I got one dude that's still alive. Up there. Uh, but this particular NPC can be really, really annoying. Uh, so I went ahead and cleared out the camp. Once you open this up, it's going to try and run away. So I highly recommend doing whatever you can to try and prevent her or him from leaving. Which can be a couple different ways. Uh, the rope is definitely a good choice. Oh, yeah. There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You will need the key that that person holds to unlock the chest to get the mentor's cloak. So now we just need to go over the weapons, and we need Fafnir's Fang. Now, to get this weapon, you're going to need to head back to Norway. On the eastern side of the starting area, you're going to find the Hiddlesvinny's Crag, and right here is going to be a cave. When you go through this cave... Uh, you're going to encounter a guy standing at the end of it. We're going to need to fight this dude to get his weapon. And there we go. We get Fafnir's Fang. Now, last but not least, we're going to have to get the Feared Spear, which if you look at your map is just below the E and the R in Mercia here. There's going to be an area that you go to in the main story at Off Church. If you approach from the northern gate here, there's going to be some guards. There's going to be a couple other people in this area as well. Um, but right in here is an area that you can go down. Now, basically, all you're going to have to do is just follow your radar here to find it. It's going to be under the water. Just kill the dudes that are inside and loot the chest at the end. And you'll be able to get the Feared Spear. Most likely, you already got it if you came here in the story. Now, I do hope you all enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to slap that like button like it owes you money. Show the video some love. I'll see you all in the next one.